Hey, welcome to Mama Mandala. I'm Hagar. I'm so glad you're here. I have a story to tell you, to share with you today. It's a story about a goddess named Ostara or Eoster. She's an ancient Germanic in, goddess in her origin. And she's a maiden and she wears flowers on her head because she's the goddess of spring. So Easter, is the, the holiday that Christians celebrate, is named after her. And Ostara her name, is what neo-pagans named the spring equinox holiday, the Sabbath of out of the eight holidays on the wheel of the year. So Ostara is this great expression of a full spectrum goddess that is holding in her also motherly um, nurturing energy and uh, crone's wisdom qualities. But when she is Ostara, when she is the spring, she is the erotic and full of life power of springtime, of nature in this time of year when things begin to rise from the earth. She's the goddess that brings things from the depth of winter, from the darkness of winter, from the depth of the earth and up and out toward the sun because the sun is right now growing in its power. And we're, just in a few days, it's spring equinox on, in the Northern Hemisphere. And we're gonna hit that moment when day and night are equal. And it's a great reminder because day and night are only equal for a moment. And then there's a tipping over that takes us to the other side. Nice to remember also that in the Southern Hemisphere, the celebration is of autumn equinox. And then there's a tipping over into the darkness. So we're always in relationship for, to, with the opposite energy on the other side. Something nice to remember. And we go much deeper into that in the Spring Equinox Somatic Ceremony. I'll leave a link in the description of the video so that you can check out all the details for that. It's coming up and it's an online journey. It's You can do it at your own time and there's a lot of um, deep, rich, information and knowledge and pieces of wisdom sprinkled in there and there are physical practices and meditation practices and uh, mantra and mudra and a lot of mythology so all of that in a link with all the details and i'll share that in the description of the video but the story i wanted to share with you is about one year when ostara was a little late so spring equinox arrives the forest is in under still under frozen a frozen um spell the animals are starting to get worried because there is no thawing of snow and of of ice and they are cold and they're getting tired of it and they're so ready for the goddess to arrive with her magnificent capacity to shift things around, to melt the ice and to bring out new sprouts and to arouse the, the plants into flowering so that the insects can come in and so that bees can sip on nectar and make honey. And sh they are ready for, for their mates of the season because this is the season of eroticism, right? There's like this attractive power and you can think about it in your life, not just in, a, in, a, in the sexual sense of the word, but really in the, in the pleasure of life, in the, in the way that life sometimes calls us out and, and invites us to, to rise and we feel more inspired. So they are worried because she's not arriving. But what they realize, a few of them, because some of them are kind of complaining, right? Some of them are just like, oh, she's never gonna come. She forgot all about us. So, and then the bears are like, no, she's gonna come. She's gonna come. I can feel it. Of course she's gonna come. We can't be without her, right? And the foxes are like, ah, oh, when am I gonna shift my fur from the white of snow into the, into the crimson color of spring and summer? And all the animals are, are, they're kind of confused. And then some of them, the rabbits are some of them, they sit down and they think and they, and they try to figure out what to do. And the rabbit realizes that maybe there is something that they can do. That maybe 
spring is not coming because she is waiting for them to call her. That, that if they all find a way to make offerings to her, that if they all go to their, um, to their expertise and to find their own strengths and to figure out what it is that they do that nobody else can do and to find their talents and they all go and they make something for her, maybe that will call her into the, into the forest into their back into their lives because we all know those moments do you know those moments i'm a big i'm a huge um fan and and a, and a big adv advocate for the darkness <laughs> i think the darkness has been demonized in ways that are really destructive for the planet darkness is needed it's a part of the cycle but we always have these moments, I don't know about you, but I have these moments when, when I, I give myself a lot of time and space in, in periods when I feel really dark, when I feel heavy, maybe there's even an energy of, of a lot of grief and a lot of sadness, maybe even a little bit of depression. And I give myself room in those dark caves because I know that there's a lot to learn there, that if I listen carefully, and if I sit with myself there, the energy will start to thaw on its own and a shift will happen and I will come out of it much wiser because that's kind of what ends to happen, right? But then sometimes there are, t there are moments in life when I'm there in the cave, I'm in the snow and the thawing isn't coming. Like I'm sitting with it, I'm giving myself space and instead of going, instead of it, melting on its own, what starts to happen is I spin deeper into the darkness, deeper into a, a place where I'm starting to get a little stuck. Like it starts to get to a point where, okay, it's not, I'm not going to get out of it on my own. It's, it's not going to just pass. I'm going to need to do something with it. I'm going to need to find my strength and start to carve a path out of out of the out of winter out of the inner winter again huge advocate for winter and for darkness i think there's there's not enough space for that in our culture today capitalism wants us to just stay in the light have more coffee turn on the lights and keep working there's so much wisdom that waits for us in the dark and there are moments and there are times when we start to get stuck there so this is, for me, this is what the story is inviting us to consider. What are the times, what are the moments when we're starting to just be, it's just not thawing on its, on its own and I'm going to need to do something about it. So I'm, I've been receptive. Now I'm going to need to start to generate my way out of it. Recognize that in yourself. So they each go and they run around, they look for things. And then they, some of the, some of the birds are deciding that they're going to sing for her. And the fox is, is boring and looking for things under there. The snakes are boring and looking for seeds under the ground. Um, there, there are some animals that are climbing trees like the, like the chipmunks and, and the squirrels and they're climbing the trees and they look for something up there. So everybody's looking for things in their zone of genius, in the areas where they are most, um, where they are strong, their, their, their talents are there, their gifts are there right? Because we're going to need to use our gifts and our talents and our own wisdom and our own experience in order to climb out of the, out of the, out of that hole where we may have gotten ourselves a little stuck in. So there's this, the first robin of spring, the first bird robin of springtime arrives in the forest in that moment and she hears she she looks at all the animals and she kind of hears them talking and chattering about all the gifts that they're making and all the offerings that they're creating and the altars of appreciation that they are forming for the goddess right because we do we we life can happen on its own it's not like life will will not happen it's not like spring will not happen will not come but sometimes we need to participate a little bit more in the process of making the life that we want of taking ourselves to the next stage of 
making offerings and that can be in the way that a lot of people talk about these days in the in the indigenous ways of offering making to in different ways to different energies to different deities different people do their things it can simply be also how we live our lives how we construct our days how we form our conversations how we come and show up to one another that can be a form of offering offerings the offerings of our creativity and of our and again of our of our strengths and of our talent can show up in many different ways so we we're invited to also get creative about the way that we think about it and feel into it so the robin is not sure what to do and she's flying back and forth and trying to figure it out and then she decides she's going to make a feast of worms and so she goes and she tries to look for ways into the soil so that you can capture some worms and she just keeps hitting these places of ice wherever she goes she just meets ice do you know the feeling you're just really trying to get yourself into that place where you're finding your strength and you're just hitting ice and eventually robin falls down the her wing is broken and she's starting to get very very cold and she's lying down she can't fly and she hasn't been able to find a gift do you know that feeling does that does that ever happen to you that happens to me sometimes i'm, I'm really trying i'm trying to pull myself out of it i'm trying to participate i'm trying to generate a new way and a different way i'm trying to help myself resurrect god damn it <laughs> but it ain't happening so uh she she's just falling there on the ground and she's she's freezing to death and in that moment right before life leaves her body ostara arrives and she starts to thaw the the all the all the ice because the energy, the voice, the power, and the effort that all the animals um, have put into calling her has has worked. She she heard it. She was asleep. She was doing something. She didn't know this. She she was just she was caught in her own stuff. But she heard the voices of her co collaborators, and ah, uh, all of a sudden it woke her up. Right? It 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 brought her back. Because, because we have to do it together. Because if we want to bring, if we want to bring life back, if we want to bring um, um, a fla flavors of, of deliciousness into our lives and into each other's lives, if we want to create justice, we got to we gotta work together. And working together means also listening to other perspectives some rise to the trees some borrow under the ground some find holes others find caves some become flowers others have wings different people also see and think of things in a different way so we open ourselves up to listen to each other to make room for other opinions because to create justice is not just to create justice for one people we, we don't want to see it. We, we really want to be able to create a way of being and working together. And that's, and that's hard. And maybe those are ideals and goals that are not fully achievable. That doesn't mean it shouldn't be worked toward. So we have to work together and we have to work together in a biodiverse a bio, a biodiverse ecosystem so that we can really add to each other which means that we're not all going to see it or think about it in the same way it's a forest of of voices and of talents and of gifts and this is what pulls ostara back into this into this mythic landscape of inspiration and as she walks and she sees all the offerings and she hears all the songs, she's inspired, she's aroused, she's excited. She turns everything on, right? Like she covers the ground with, with green. And then she walks toward, so she sees, some, sees something on the ground that, that, that worries her and she walks, comes closer and, and she, she sees that it's 
a, an almost dead robin. She sees it's not dead yet, but oh, this beautiful little bird is almost dead and her heart breaks. She's so sad about it. It was almost spring. I almost showed up. I, om I was almost able to help you, but is it too late? And she picks the robin up and the robin is shivering in her hand. So it's not too late maybe. And she, she pets the beautiful little bird in her hand and she breathes warmth in, over her and into her and she breathes life a little bit back into her and she tries to um she tries to help heal the broken wind wing <laughs> but she's she sees that that this this presence in order to come back to life needs more warmth needs to turn into something else that it's not going to be the same she can't really fix this it's not too late but it's almost too late but it's not fully but it is so she covers the robin with the with the fur of a rabbit and she says you know i'm gonna i'm gonna give it a try let's see if i can make this magic work and she breathes life in back and forth breathes life into this robin that is now slowly transforming into a rabbit because remember it was the rabbit that that said wow we gotta we gotta we gotta work at this we gotta we gotta collaborate with nature we gotta call ostara in we gotta be a part of the change that we want to see right to quote gandhi for the billionth of time we gotta we gotta be it so it's the it's the rabbit that now is taking the the it, that's taking shape with that robin kind of a spirit. So it's when we start to become something new and we become to we begin to breathe life into a new way of being. But what's really amazing and cute and delicious about this story is that the the bird the robin becomes a rabbit, but Ostara leaves the possibility, the capacity of the robin, who is now a rabbit, to lay eggs. So now the rabbit begins to lay eggs and the eggs are colorful and sparkly and just whimsical and silly, but really beautiful and artistic. Because when we go through a process of transformation and transmutation, when a part of us dies and we resurrect and we bring back to life a new way of being, a new form, it is not with, it's not in a way that sheds the old without giving any, without leaving any room for it. As we evolve, as we grow, as parts of us die and new parts emerge, as we layer ourselves with experience, it's, it's one layer on top of the other. We're never really getting rid of anything, but we are rising out of what we've learned, of what we've been. What we've been stays with us. It, the, both the traumas and the core wounds and the beauty and the talents, and we, and we keep transforming and we keep building on top and we heal certain parts and other parts we're not fully healing and some become scars and some become new ways of perceiving and moving through the world. And so we, become, we turn from a robin into a rabbit, but we maintain our ability to lay eggs and the egg is of course with Ostara, a symbol of fertility. And it's twice born, right? Like animals that are born out of, that come out of eggs are twice born. First they come out of the, of the mother and then the mother sits and then, and, and then or, or not, not in all animals, but the mother, the mother births them and then they have to birth out of the egg. And of course they have to birth out of the egg themselves. Nobody can help an animal come out of the egg. In fact, often when, when we do, we harm them because they need to gain a certain kind of strength by pushing against the hard shell of the egg and 
coming out of it. So the egg is this whole other symbol. Again, we get deeply into it in the in the uh, spring equinox somatic ceremony. There's it, it's really an exploration of a lot of different symbols and myths and we we dive into a lot in there and so i'm i'm gonna leave a link for you in the description of the video and i really hope that you can do it because it's it's pretty magical and very empowering and you're going to come out of it with a feeling of being uh, in participation with life where it is for you right now even if it's not a spring period in your life you're going to come out of it feeling like you're a little bit more in the rhythm of nature, your body is going to be involved, right? The movement of your body, your voice is involved in it. So we, we weave together a, a lot of different parts of ourselves and we move into the mythic landscape, which is allows us to touch the unconscious in many ways and become more aware and more present with different aspects of ourselves and understand ourselves better and through that hopefully also understand each other better and make more room for one another so that's the story i had for you today i hope you enjoyed it i hope it was um, sweet for you and you got something out of it that you can bring into your life and if you like it put a like on it put a like on the video subscribe to this channel if you haven't yet and share this with your people because maybe if you liked it, other friends will like it too, okay? Happy Spring Equinox. Check out the somatic ceremony and I will see you soon. Thank you so much. Mwah! Have a beautiful rest of your day or night wherever this catches you. Namaste.